Setting up a Minecraft server can be a big pain in the paw. Many of the easiest solutions out there will end up charging you a monthly fee and you never even have control over your world files. So if the company goes belly up or otherwise disappears, you lose all of your builds. So I set out to create an easier way. Pinecraft Installer lets you host your very own multiplayer Minecraft server on a cheap little single board computer such as the Raspberry Pi 4. The new version 2.6 just came out and it's killer. Today I'm going to show you how to install it and I'll highlight some of the great new features, many of which are a direct result of user requests on our last video. Stick around till the end because I'm going to show you how to add your own user as an admin. This feature is brought to you by Ameridroid.com. Get your Raspberry Pi 4 or other single board computer, home automation devices, and electronics accessories at Ameridroid.com. American-based sales and support, visit Ameridroid.com. I've got some exciting ideas for Pinecraft that I'd love to implement in a future version, but it'll take the support of users like you to help me do it. So if you love Pinecraft, please consider supporting the project at patreon.com slash Pinecraft. Now, I released the very first version of Pinecraft Installer back in January, and here we are, it's less than three months later, and version 2.6 is already out, implementing several user requests. In its infancy, Pinecraft only installed Spigot, and only in survival mode to boot. But users wanted more options, and I received a ton of great feedback from users who have already done their homework. So now, Paper is the default server flavor, but you can choose from an assortment of available servers. And don't worry, I'll explain the basic differences between the available server versions in just a moment. In this video, we'll turn a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8GB of RAM into a high-performance multiplayer Minecraft server using Pinecraft Installer. The very first thing that I need to do is grab my Linux base distro, and I'm choosing Ubuntu Server 20.04 since it has a 64-bit version, which will let me take advantage of the 8 gigabytes of RAM on my Raspberry Pi 4. You can grab that at ubuntu.com, and I've got the direct link for you in the video description as well. You want to use fast media, otherwise your server performance is going to suffer. So I've flashed the Ubuntu image to a HyperX gaming micro SD card, which boasts 100 megabytes per second read and 80 megabytes per second write. I've got my Pi 4 booted and grabbed the IP address of the Pi from my router's DHCP pool, so let's connect. Ubuntu Server gives me a proper 64-bit distro. I've got 8 gigabytes of RAM on the Pi 4, and I can see 7 gigabytes are free while it's running. To install Pinecraft, we're going to need Git. So first thing I'm going to do is update our apt repositories. sudo apt update will get you there. And after a few seconds, it'll be done. So now I can run sudo apt install git. And I can actually see that Ubuntu Server comes with Git already pre-installed, and it's already the latest version. So I'm good to start. I'm going to make sure that I'm in my user's home folder, and then run git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash cat5tv slash pinecraft. That downloads the latest version of Pinecraft to our clean distro. Let's cd into the Pinecraft folder, and it's super simple to get up and running. We're going to type sudo dot slash install and hit enter. Pinecraft will quickly install any dependencies it needs to run and then we'll be greeted with the splash screen. Simply hit enter to proceed. You'll see again that Pinecraft will install any components that will be required to run your Minecraft server. Give that a moment to complete and we'll be prompted with our first question. Which server flavor do you want? Each of the available options are just different teams of developers working on various improvements on Minecraft's server. And it'd be tough to give you an exhaustive comparison, but essentially we've got Paper, which supports plugins and it installs very quickly. It's been optimized to perform very well, and it does so even on a single board computer. It's lightweight and it runs great, so that's why I've made it the new default. 
Next in the list is Fabric, which is yet another lightweight, well-optimized server which supports plugins and has a fast build time. Then there's Spigot, which runs great, but it's a bit heavier than the first two, and it certainly takes a lot longer to install since it compiles from source. Then there's the experimental implementation of Kuberite. This one's interesting, though quite niche, since it's a full rewrite of the Minecraft server in C++. Since it's not a Java-based server, it's significantly more optimized and could even allow running a Minecraft server on a super cheap board such as the Raspberry Pi Zero. But it does have caveats. In particular, it only works with older Minecraft Java clients. But it's definitely fun to give it a try and see if you can get a Minecraft server running on an ultra-cheap system. Finally, there's one called Vanilla, and this is the legit Minecraft server as provided by Mojang. It's included in Pinecraft for the purists, but as many will tell you, you can't expect it to perform nearly as well as the optimized servers, nor does it support plugins or mods. So all that said, we're gonna go for the default today and install the paper server. If you don't know which one you want, this is a great starting point. Next, we'll select whether we want a survival or creative gameplay server. If you want to follow our series and learn how to play Minecraft, make sure you choose survival. If, however, you want to try your hand at master builds without having to mine the resources, give creative a try. Creative is likely a great starting point if you've got very young children, but if you want exciting gameplay, you're probably gonna wanna lean toward survival. Enter your Linux username. In my case, I haven't changed it from the default on my Raspberry Pi, and that's Ubuntu. You'll need to accept the Mojang End User License Agreement, which you can do here. Next is our World Seed. You can choose one that's provided in the Pinecraft installer, enter a custom one, or just have your seed generated randomly. You can have your Minecraft server load automatically at boot, so just choose yes if that sounds good. And finally, we get an information window that simply tells us a bit more about our selections. You'll see on my Raspberry Pi 4, Pinecraft installer is also going to overclock my CPU to 1.9 gigahertz to maximize gameplay performance. Plus, my Minecraft server will have almost five and a half gigabytes of RAM allocated to it. Hit enter to continue. This screen is just warning me that my Pi is going to be overclocked, and since I'm fine with that, I'll hit enter and the installation will begin. And it's done! My Minecraft server is already installed and running. Hit enter to exit. You can see if your server is running by typing slash etc slash init.d slash Pinecraft space status. One means that it's up, zero means it's down. I'll likely improve that in a future release. As of Pinecraft 2.6, the Minecraft server runs under a Linux screen session. So if you want to access the Minecraft server console directly, simply type screen-r on the server. As you can see, my server is still generating the world. It can take several minutes, so be patient. To exit the console while still leaving the game server running, press Control A followed by D. That's the screen command to detach the session. If I list the running screens, you can see one called Pinecraft. And that's literally all it takes to get your Minecraft server up and running. So let's connect and check it out. In your Minecraft Java client on any computer on your local network, go to multiplayer and add a server. Give it a friendly name. I'm gonna call mine new server Pinecraft 2.6 and enter the IP address of the Raspberry Pi on which I ran the Pinecraft installer. Remember that this only works on your local network. If you wanna give your friends access to the server, which you can, you're gonna to need to open port 25565 in your router and grab the public IP address of your network at currentip.xyz and share that with your friends. Now every router is slightly different, so I can't really show you how to set that up, but consult your manual and look for a feature called port forwarding or something similar to that. If in doubt, hey, get your nerdiest friend to come on by and give you a hand. And here we are in my brand new Minecraft world. 
interesting. A floating tree. <laughs> Well, as I run around, you can see that the performance is really excellent. Oh, and if you want to know how I make Minecraft look so sexy, click on the video here. So there you have it, a Pinecraft 2.6 installation of a paper Minecraft server on a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigabytes of RAM running the 64-bit Ubuntu server OS. Took no effort at all, and here we are. So thanks for staying with me till the end. Just for that, I'm going to show you a quick way to add yourself as an admin to your shiny new Minecraft server. We already learned how to connect to the Minecraft console screen, so let's do that. From there, you can enter console commands directly, so it's super easy to just go op bald nerd, that's me, to make myself a server operator. Now that I'm op, I can run my server commands from within the game including opping other players if I'd like, uh, changing game modes on the fly, setting the time of day, giving players resources, and so much more. I really want a plaque one day to put on this wall, so please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and click that bell to be notified next time I release a tutorial. If you want to see all the awkward moments behind the scenes, and even chat with me directly, join our fleet, patreon.com slash category5. I'm Robbie Ferguson at Category 5 TV. Don't forget, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Thanks for watching. <laughs>